Today, we are pleased to announce the results of the office holders' election of the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide. Established in 2000, the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide is a unique network of 46 Hong Kong business associations covering 35 countries and regions with around 11,000 individual members. We are honored to have all the Hong Kong Business Association's members as the devoted ambassadors of Hong Kong. Every three years, members of the executive committee run an election for the positions of chairman, vice chairman, honorary treasurer, and honorary secretary among different regions. This year, the election was processed by an online voting system. In the presence of our legal advisor from Dakins, we recorded the counting of election results, and I'm pleased to announce the office holders as follows. The chairman is Mr. Hans Paulus from the Netherlands Hong Kong Business Association. The vice chairman is Ms. Alexandria Shem from the Hong Kong Canada Business Association National. The honorary treasurer is Mr. Dixon Chu from the Hong Kong Malaysia Business Association. And the honorary secretary is Mr. Bernardo Mandia from the Portugal Hong Kong Chamber of Commerce and Industry. May I now invite the Federation Chairman of 2021 to 2024, Mr. Hans Paulus, who is joining us from the Netherlands to say a few words. Mr. Paulus, please. Business Association heads, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the newly elected office holders, I would like to thank all of your votes of confidence. It gives me an immense pleasure to meet you all here. With the great leadership of Dennis and the support of the office holders, Alexandra and Michael, the Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide has become a strong and cohesive business network covering 46 associations in 35 countries and regions. As the new chairman, I wish to lead the Federation to become even a more connected network for business and opportunities. Congratulations to Alexandra, Dixon and Bernardo Welcome to the team. Together with the new elected board members, we will gain for strong and good information about Hong Kong and the GBA. The position and responsibility of each association is clear that you need to support your members in the business relationship with Hong Kong. Therefore, it's important to have a good understanding about the added values of Hong Kong in many ways. The previous nearly two years were dominated by the pandemic, which we still face. The situation was and still is disruptive for the world. Econ economies were infected, traveling is banded, global logistics is disrupted, prices of material are increasing. We face challenges which we never experienced in history. It's nearly impossible to travel to Hong Kong at this moment due to the restriction and protocols to avoid new COVID-19 infections. Let's hope this situation will come to an end very soon. On the other hand, the new world will also provide opportunities, and we see already great numbers of recovery and growth in economies, extreme fast recoveries. Hong Kong is facing a great and ambitious plan for the upcoming five years with interesting elements as finance business, trade, international transport, sustainability, R&D and innovations. These areas will give new opportunities, which we, can be, which we can be great for our members. The Federation is ready and will provide all the support needed. With sharing information, you will be able to inform your members, which enables them to seek these opportunities in Hong Kong. I urge your continuous support to keep the development momentum of the Federation. And I look forward to working closely with the new team to bring the greatest value of the Federation members and strengthen the business links between Hong Kong and the rest of the world. As Christmas and New Year is approaching, I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a great year ahead. Stay well and healthy, and I really hope and trust to see you all in person next year. Thank you. Mr. Paulus. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Now comes to the panel of opportunities from China's dual circulation policy and the GGBA development. Cities in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, GBA, have developed rapidly in recent years, and its development is further bolstered by the introduction of China's dual circulation policy. In fact, the 86 million potential customers in the area also give a fresh impetus to the entire Bay Area economy. This panel will enable you to understand the latest developments and challenges in the GBA. We are pleased to have three renowned experts with us this afternoon. They are Mr. Alex Ku, Chief Executive Officer of Chevalier AOC Freight Express Holdings Limited. Mr. Anthony Lin, CEO, Greater Bay Area of Standard Chartered Bank. Mr. Lin is joining us from Shenzhen. Mr. Xu Wei, Vice President and Secretary of the Board of PCI Technology Group. Mr. Xu is joining us from Guangzhou. We are also delighted to have Ms. Catherine Zheng, PwC Partner, China Tax and Business Advisory, to chair this section for us. The floor is yours, Catherine. Thank you. Good afternoon. So today's um, our topic is about the dual circulations in China and also the latest developments of the GBA. We are honored to have uh, on stage Alex um, from um, the CEO of the Chevalier o AOC uh, Freight Express Holdings. And online, we have uh, Anthony Lin, um, the CEO of GBA Standard Charter Bank, uh, and also uh, Sui Wei, um, the Vice Chair, uh, President and the Secretary of the Board of PCI Technology Group. We hope that um, they will share their views and insights on the dual circulations policy as well as the GBA developments with us from different perspectives uh, and angles in the coming 60 minutes. So um, the Chief Executive, um, Kevin Lam, issued a policy address in October and introduced the Northern Metropolis Development Strategy. Um, the Metropolis includes the Yunlong and also the Love District covering 300 square um, kilometers from west to east of the Hong Kong borders. Um, I think we will expect there will be more land resources uh, will be available for the residential and commercial projects in the coming future. It is proposed to construct five additional railways lines to enhance the connectivity of the metropolis and most important to make it is a sustainable community suitable for living in and working. With the supply of the land, infrastructure, talents, um, investment and financing services, as well as the manufacturing, a complete ecosystem with an emphasis of innovations and technology industry will be founded in the metropolis area. So what we are expecting, basically uh, according to the assessment, um, the metropolis will house 2.5 million populations uh, with 650,000 jobs created, particularly 150,000 in the IT sector. So no doubt, the metropolis will be the most vibrant area of Hong Kong in the next 20 years, and it would create a platform for the overseas companies, particularly for those tech companies, in setting up their presence in Hong Kong, covering the GBA market with the populations over 86 million, while gaining support from the research and talents resources provided by the local university in the GBA area. So this is just a snapshot of the development of the northern metropolis. And then um, I would like to pass the time to Anthony Ling. Um, so um, basically, um, with the global, you know, gradual global economic recovery and as an international financial hub, how do you see, you know, Hong Kong um, positioning themselves in the region and, of course, in GBA particularly? And also, um, any, you know, um, can you share with us the views about the due circulations 
and what will be the implications to the overseas entities, you know, in the coming, say, one or two decades. So um, time passed to you, Anthony. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a quick honor to join today's um, uh, uh, discussion. And also, uh, I would like to express my congratulations to uh, Mr. Paulus and the new leadership team of the association. I uh, wish you every success. So, uh, Kevin, I think uh, you already gave a very good introduction of um, the plan uh, announced by uh, Chief Executive uh, of Hong Kong uh, and, and also some background, right? Uh, obviously, I think Hong Kong is very well positioned um, in, in the entire GBA setup. Let's take a step back. GBA um, has a very unique position. Uh, first of all, innovation technology is very strong uh, in GBA. Uh, at the same time, uh, GBA has very strong manufacturing capabilities, which actually started many decades ago. And Hong Kong actually uh, is, is having a very unique position and very important position to make the whole GBA proposition works as an international uh, financial center. Hong Kong is connecting, um, is, is a very key window uh, to connect mainland China uh, with the rest of the world uh, by leveraging Hong Kong's um, strong uh, financial services platform. And if you look at the deal circulation um, policy, Hong Kong is right in the middle, the intercept of the domestic circulation as well as the international circulations. I think um, uh, I, this is the big picture. Uh, Hong Kong is, is very well positioned. And that's why I think uh, with all the policy you just highlighted, uh, I, I think Hong Kong is doing a lot of things to um, capture this opportunity. Let's be a bit more specific, right? Um, Hong Kong is so special, like what I said, one country, two system. Uh, you have a very big mainland market, uh, but then Hong Kong is running a very um, um, a different system, you know, very well connected with the rest of the world. I think the role of uh, Hong Kong being a super connector um, between the rest of the world and mainland China will just get stronger and stronger. No matter it is business from mainland China want to expand overseas or new companies from, I think, all the participants countries, they want to uh, come to GBA probably uh, Hong Kong is a very good gateway uh, to that um, investment. So, um, uh, I mean, you have the, the, the best of all world uh, uh, from Hong Kong setup perspective. And uh, a few specific business from a bank's perspective, we see uh, wealth management definitely is going to be a very, very strong uh, sector that you will see growing in, in GBA. Um, all the market statistics, um, you can tell, uh, four out of the 10 most wealthiest cities in mainland China, of course, including Hong Kong and Macau. Four out of 10 are in GBA. Uh, you have uh, over a million households, uh, have an asset of uh, you know, over uh, 6 million RMB. And also you can see the fast economic growth, uh, you know, helping the people in GBA accumulating wealth much faster. And when you have more wealth, uh, the demand for in, uh, global allocation of your assets of the wealth uh, is very, very important. So the, the need is there, the population is there, like Catherine highlighted, 80, 86 million people. Uh, Hong Kong, with the G, under the GBA framework, Hong Kong is very well positioned to expand the potential business from what we have around 7, 8 million population in Hong Kong to potentially 18 million plus. Uh, population in China. And, and Hong Kong is in a very good position to offer global services, global products um, that a lot of this uh, you cannot find domestically uh, in China. So Wealth Connect is definitely very crucial. Uh, Rumi internationalization. Uh, Hong Kong has been the forerunner, I mean, has been the leader in Rumi internationalization um, since day one. And now Hong Kong has a deepest Rumi pool um, uh, outside of China, right, with uh, over 600 billion of liquidity there. 70% of renminbi settlement uh, is going to uh, Hong Kong. So I think 
Hong Kong play a very, very important role uh, in the RMB internationalization kind of a journey. Uh, and, and of course, we cannot, um, uh, without mentioning uh, the capital market uh, in Hong Kong is very strong. Uh, you look at all the IPO, we have been doing very well. And Hong Kong will um, you know, continue to be very attractive to a lot of unicorns in GBA to, uh, for capital raising. We already see this trend happening and we can also see a lot of new product services are being offered um, in Hong Kong. So um, uh, uh, I think all in all, Hong Kong is very, very uh, uh, well positioned to capture this opportunity. At the same time, I think the development of Hong Kong is also going to contribute significantly to the dual circulation um, policy of uh, mainland China. Maybe I can pause here, Catherine. Thank you, Anthony. So, yeah, I cannot agree with you, at, you know, more that there are lots of opportunities, um, you know, Hong Kong, because uh, as we are the financial hub in the GBA, and um, there are lots of, you know, opportunities, not just about the capital, but maybe the green bonds, you know, all those stuff are quite, you know, quite hot, you know, um, in right now um, in Hong Kong. So um, next, uh, we would like to have Alex um, just sit next to me. So I, I know that Alex is, is from the um, transportation, you know, business sector. So um, with the transport infrastructures being arranged in the recent years, strengthened uh, between the cross border, uh, between Hong Kong and Shenzhen, uh, with the additional, uh, we say, we understand that there will be three additional railway lines between Hong Kong and Shenzhen uh, after the introductions of the uh, metropolis. So what, what do you see that uh, would there be any business opportunities or challenges arising with the, you know, the Hong Kong role as an international logistic hub? And also, do you have any, you know, um, would you mind to share some latest trend or development of the logistic solution and, um, and also the strategies in capturing those business opportunities arising in the GBA? Because we are all talking about the big data, you know, the IT. So what, what will be the changes and what will be the challenges and opportunities going forward? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, I think the, um, I will like to touch about the, something about the logistics and transportation infrastructure, and as you uh, already mentioned, and some uh, quite special special area that uh, we are doing is a, a little bit about related to the um, vaccine. That means the cold chain uh, medical product or some biomedical product uh, in between China, especially in the G GBA into Hong Kong and then to other countries. So uh, I thank you very much for the time over here. And I would like to share some uh, of the slide to uh, all the guests. Uh, so today, uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon for every valuable guest. Yeah. So uh, we we are coming from a, a group company in Hong Kong. Uh, we are one of their uh, subsidiaries inside the Safari groups, uh, and we are one and only one uh, logistic company inside the group. So uh, we have our uh, own resources to provide to our group at the very beginning to provide logistics service, to provide the transportation service for them in different countries, uh, especially in China, okay? Um, so regarding for the, uh, just mentioned by Kevin that, um, I think maybe most of the guests do not know how big or how frequency of the connectivity between Hong Kong and China in terms of the cargo, even though under the COVID uh, situation, uh, what I can say that every truck cross the border between Shenzhen into Hong Kong is only five seconds for one truck. Five seconds for one truck, even though right now. Okay, so uh, this is contribute because we have a six uh, row race uh, borders uh, from Hong Kong into Shenzhen and from Shenzhen into Hong Kong. So uh, quite uh, recently, is uh, one is uh, uh, the uh, Lin Hang Lin Hang Way. That is uh, the Liu border. Uh, now it's only uh, using for the cargo for the transportation for the cargo, and maybe later on then they will change it uh, also uh, uh, to the passengers together. Uh, this is connect to the. Western part of the uh, Shenzhen, 
Okay, the eastern part of the Shenzhen is connected by the well known that is the Shenzhen Bay uh, port area. Okay, so uh, we also have a different uh, beach inside the GBA that uh, is connected together uh, for between Hong Kong to Macau and also to Zhuhai. And now it's building one very hot topic is uh, for Shenzhen to have a beach to Zhongshan. And of course, uh, have a Guangzhou have a Fulman beach to Dongguan and also so on. So these will be provide the connectivity of the full energy inside the different cities in the GBA that they can change the goods or they can uh, move the people from one place to another place within maybe 45 minutes. Okay, so this is a very good connectivity over there. So that's we mentioned. I saw the statistic that is now. Even though under COVID that the update situation for September, for the truck, not for the passenger car or something, only for the truck is all is already five hundred thousand over the five hundred thousand. Oh, okay, for the for the September. So when you divide it into uh, 30, uh, 30 days, uh, then it will be five seconds. Yeah, for one truck in or two in the China. Okay, so this is, this mainly is for our daily accessory and also our cargo. Yeah, into other other country or uh, some container into the uh, seaport. Uh, so this one provide our gas that uh, just so you can see how close we are with the mainland China, especially in the GDP, uh, GPA areas. Okay, the other one is that we get a very good uh, airport facility in Hong Kong. We call we are the international aviation hub. This is no doubt. Uh, we have a. Uh, Continuously, we uh, have been the busiest uh, cargo airport in the world. I think this year will be still be number one. Last year is number two, and last past uh, eight years that we are we are also the number one. Yeah, in the in the world. Yeah, uh, the quite amazing one that we can share with the um, with other is uh, we will have a new logistic hub. Uh, we are calling about the e-commerce hub. In the airport, okay, the we call the China. That's mean the Alibaba, oh. Alibaba. They will have the uh, hub, the logistic hub over there. That's mean we will have the cargo inside this hub and use our airport facility to overseas. Okay, but the point is why Alibaba would like to choose Hong Kong because Hong Kong have a very high frequency connectivity to other countries, okay? This is one of the very important points because uh, we have a very long history about the, uh, our airport to other uh, different country or different location, different airport. We have the uh, airport right or the traffic right over there. This is not, uh, can be in one day, okay? Even though the, some of the GBA uh, airport, they are trying very hard, but this is not, can be uh, done in one day, okay? So uh, in terms of the population that within four hours, we can say that we can reach half of the population in the world, okay? This is uh, one thing that we can do. For example, we are often say that we compete with Singapore, okay? For Singapore, if they want to go in into Beijing, that they need to take six hours. That's mean if you are talking about the cargo, that's mean next day. But for us, five hour, uh, three hours, okay? If you go for the morning, then the customer, they can get the cargo in the afternoon. Okay, this is our geographical uh, remarkable location that is a very good location over here. And as Kevin mentioned that uh, our CE already, and also the president in China already mentioned about the, some of the direction for few, our future development. For me now over here, I just want to highlight about the GBA. The GBA that what we are talking about, the, the, the size or the population over here, is we can understand the population in the GBA is already over the United Kingdom. Okay, that means a lot of the customer over here, the population size is more, more than United Kingdom. And our GDP over here is almost the same of the Australia and also Spain. Okay, so you can say that only one size of the uh, country that we are already can compete with another 
uh, the whole country. Okay, this is our market over here. And why we are, why for our company it is very important or emphasize of the development of the some of the uh, biological technology uh, or the medical device or the medical product over in this industry is because inside the GBA that they already most of the industrial park they already establish their own industrial areas or some manufacturing plant in this in their in their area for example uh, the Shenzhen they have a uh, one uh, place called Ping San Ping San uh, the first time I think two years or three years ago I go to Ping San that there is only 100 uh, uh, biological company over there but uh, this July that I go to there is over 10,000 already it's over 10,000 over there so they are very pretty enough of land, pretty big of the, uh, pretty good of the environment for the Ping San area that they are doing the, uh, the, the research and development or some manufacturing over there. Okay. So this slide also show the some of the uh, most what we are doing in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, what we are doing, even though small in size, but we are very significant. And we are very comprehensive and diversified to doing different types of the biological industry. Okay, such as the we are doing some uh, research, we are doing some uh, met, uh, some medical device of the uh, production, we are doing the uh, lab circuitry, and we are doing clinical trial and so many different things in here. And our government in Hong Kong also provide different supports for the pharmaceutical com company and also pharmaceutical support, not only in R&D, but also in the financing and also in buying the uh, machinery uh, or provide the land or provide the, uh, some of the laboratory for them in Science Park. Yeah. So the uh, biological market that we are talking in the GBA that I would like to highlight is that uh, in this area that Hong Kong can provide quite a lot of the setup or the test back for the international company. What they are doing now, they are also coming to Hong Kong. For some, we understand some uh, Japanese company, they come to Hong Kong to set it up in Hong Kong. And then they use this as a test bed into China. And the GBA or as well as China can provide Hong Kong a quite a lot of the sample because you, you know that they if they're doing clinical trial or the first pilot or second pilot then they need to have a sample so this one we can set it up in hong kong and then they could do some sample in hong kong do some sampling do them uh, research over in hong kong and then they can man, they can mature their product and then in in the in in china so this is uh, what they are doing right now uh, so this provide us quite a lot of uh, opportunity to move the uh, clinical trial products in between Hong Kong and China, China and Hong Kong. Okay, so uh, for this one, the some of the idea that uh, what uh, we are needed in, in this area or there's some difficulty that we are facing in this area is we still have uh, not so many qualified logistics company can provide the service in this area for the coaching. And we have a uh, lot of the coaching topic warehouse inside this area only perfect one okay can we cannot find any public one over here and the other is uh we also have some of the uh problem in between hong kong and macau okay for example for macau that uh even though we have the beach from hong kong to macau but the beach cannot allow to for the for for using for the cargo okay they are only carry the passenger okay but for the barge that's mean the ship the ocean surface that they cannot accept the cold chain if you were talking about the drug of the cold chain that they cannot accept okay so this is some of the challenges that they that nowadays that we, we need to overcome or we need to sit and talk with the gba market okay so the last one i would like to give you one uh, case study is the uh, our company case study um uh, 
during the COVID that there is no direct flight from uh, Italy, uh, Milan to uh, Hai Ho to China to Highland Highland Island. No, so the customer they are looking for to provide the drug, uh, the cancer drugs, from uh, to the customer in Highland. So that means this is uh, to save life. Okay, to save life. The hospital is in Highland, so they need to send it to into Hong Kong, and then Hong Kong that we need to book the cross border truck, in and cross the border, it Y Shenzhen, and then to transfer to another long cross long truck from Shenzhen into another city, into, into Hainan. So before the COVID, that this one is quite easy to move in. But because of the uh, COVID, now the situation in, uh, is the very difficult to find the cargo space and even no cargo flight into the uh, Hainan. So this is uh, we need to do transit the shipment from Hong, Hong Kong into the uh, the GBA cities and then the GBA city into the Hainan. Okay, so this take around uh, 30, 36 hours from Hong Kong into the Hainan. Yeah, including the coast, the border. Yeah, so yeah, this is uh, what I was sharing. Yeah. Well, very impressive. So this is the case handled by your company. Uh, yes, yes. Wow, very yes. impressive. So you remind me a book called East Meets West. Yeah. Definitely Hong Kong. Uh, this is the beauty of Hong Kong because we are in the middle from your from the map that we are in the middle in the center so we can cover you know most of the areas in, within four hours yeah. yeah thank you very much so um, and also another beauty because Hong Kong we are uh, normally we speak English Cantonese and Mandarin as well so our next speaker uh, Mr. Su Wei um, he's going to you know present uh, and share his views in Mandarin so um, Mr. Xu we know in the Greater Bay Area the technology sector has developed very rapidly so based on your experience and your observation in other cities in mainland China, what are the advantages of the GBA market? As we mentioned, we often talk about AI and big data in business operation. In your day-to-day -day business, how do you think we can make use of AI to expand our business? Can you please share with us your insights? Thank you. Sure, no problem. Thank you, Catherine. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to share my views with uh, people in Hong Kong, Macau, and other regions who are very concerned with the Greater Bay Area. Please allow me to spend one minute talking about my company. PCI is an AI company headquartered in Guangzhou. Our core technologies surround artificial intelligence, including machine vision, big data, and uh, deep learning. We use AI technologies and make them like a brain so we can use our products in security and transportation sectors, primarily in metro stations. In Guangzhou, the metro control center uses our product. That means we support the operation of Guangzhou Metro, where every day over 12 million passengers are basically using our products. So this is about our business. Catherine asked about the leverage of the GBA. So let me just focus on the sector where our company is working on. I think there are two advantages. The first being talents. In Hong Kong, we have universities like Hong Kong UST, Hong Kong U, and in Guangzhou, you have Sun Yat-sen University, you have a Southwest, uh, you have South China Technology University. 
we need a huge number of talents to support technology development in China or even across the globe. You cannot find any other places than the GBA for such a large number of universities and a concentration of uh, uh, talents from different disciplines. And I think this is why the GBA is able to keep its technological innovative leverage with a huge supply of qualified talent. GBA um, can also make use of its best policies in Hong Kong and in Guangzhou and in other Pearl River Delta cities. Every municipal government take technology very seriously and they, they've offered strong support to the development of tech companies and the development of tech talents in Hong Kong and in other cities in Guangdong. The whole region is uh, offering very supportive, favorable policies to tech talents. The second advantage is regarding the financial industry. We all know that uh, in order to grow from a small sector to a big sector, we have to rely on the support of a strong financial sector. Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Macau, and Shenzhen, these four cities are a living proof of uh, China's financial sector in innovation, capital investment, stock market, IPOs. These four cities have played an important role in all these aspects. Hong Kong Exchange and also Shenzhen Exchange are among the top five stock exchanges in the world. That's why GBA companies can enjoy the support from a very strong financial industry. Now we are in the era of Web 3.0. In Web 1.0 and Web 2.0, there used to be a lot of good tech companies in GBA. The names like Huawei, ZTE, and other companies, many of which are our business partners. These companies are well known in mainland China, and I think they cannot do well without the support of a strong talent pool in the GBA. We have some colleagues from other countries like Singapore, and we also have colleagues from other cities in China, including Hong Kong and Macau. We are a public company, and we get to know a lot of overseas investors. And in anything we do, we cannot live without the support of the financial market and the strong talent pool. I think these are the two advantages of the Greater Bay Area. Um, Next, I'm going to talk about the development of AI sector in the Greater Bay Area. AI is a very broad industry, but our company focuses on machine vision. But apart from machine vision, we have uh, big data, we have audio data, we have uh, data from uh, online marketing, for example. We can use artificial intelligence to tap into the value of these different types of data. In the Greater Bay Area, we have over 200 AI companies. We have companies like us, PCI, who focuses on the application of data. We have other companies who focus on algorithm and they become unicorn companies with very good business performance. A lot of them are companies uh, that started themselves in mainland China because of the favorable policies here. In their development, the artificial intelligence sector covers the whole spectrum from the fundamental technology to uh, R&D and application in different sectors. And we have uh, 
huge sectors in every link of uh, this industry. In Web 3.0 era, I, I think companies who focus on artificial intelligence will see more added value in Web 3.0 era. The GBA is home to the largest number of AI companies in the world. So we have the first uh, mover advantage in AI sector. Other participants, other speakers talked about uh, logistics. Nowadays, we are talking about metaverse, consumer electronics, AR, and VR. I believe AI is involved in all these sectors. In consumer electronics, we use AI to detect the yield rate of uh, the assembly line. In logistics, we use uh, AI and algorithm to optimize transportation. With big data, we can figure out the best route uh, for vehicles in the transportation system. In smart transportation, in metro, and in the management of a smart city. Our technologies are there to help a city improve its efficiency. These are all the advantages that allow us to stand out uh, in artificial intelligence sector in the greater Bay Area. Thank you, Mr. Xu. So I, I would like to echo what Mr. Xu just mentioned. I'm talking about attracting the talents because in GBA area, particularly in Hong Kong, we have a very good taxation system. Um, in fact, our uh, individual income tax rate is relatively low comparing with the other countries like in European, UK or US. So um, with the introductions or all the, the new you know, projects in the northern metropolis with the sufficient supply of the land, I think definitely the living cost will be reduced in the future because they have uh, plenty of land um, supplying uh, for those residential units. So um, with the, you know, the incentives, including the tax and also the, the, apprentice, you know, the future supply of the land for the residentials, I believe that more and more talents will be attracted and then uh, we're willing to base it in the uh, Hong Kong or GBA area uh, for the GBA market and also for the markets in China as well in the future. So thank you very much. Um, and I don't know whether the, audi you know, the audience have any questions. If you do, please feel free to submit your questions. Then, um, then uh, we definitely would like to tap the brain of those um, speakers uh, for them to share more you know, uh, based on their experience. We have a, a few questions here that um, I would like to, you know, um, first, uh, Anthony, um, there is a question for you. Obvious because we are the uh, financial, you know, um, centers. Hong Kong is a financial center. So, uh, how can the, you know, the Hong Kong's financial service platform come into play to support? Because uh, we um, just mentioned by Alex, five seconds per, you know, five uh, per truck, right? Wow. I, you know, from my business, when we see the flow of the goods, then follows by the flow of the business and followed by the flow of the capital and cash. So how, how as a financial service platform can help and support the development? Anthony. Thank you, Catherine. I, I think, um, first of all, I want to thank Xu Zhong. Ah. I think uh, Xu Zhong highlighted the contribution um, from the financial sectors uh, to the growth of the technology company. Um, and, and I think this is very kind of relevant, Catherine, um, to the question you just mentioned. I think, uh, I mean, for, for all business, no matter in GBA or not in GBA, for you to grow, I think a very uh, sophisticated, good uh, financial services platform is very crucial. So if you have a chance to talk to uh, whatever companies uh, in GBA or in China, no matter big or small, I think all of them speak very highly about Hong Kong's uh, financial services in terms of product varieties, in terms of service standard. And I think the, the legal system that Hong Kong is running also give a lot of values um, to all these uh, companies operating um, in China. 
uh, or in, in GBA. So uh, give you an example. I think innovation is something very, very important in GBA. And I think technology, I just want to, you know, kind of echo Xu Zhong's comment. I think technology is very, very crucial. Uh, we are also working very hard, try to leverage this very unique advantage in GBA. There's so many startups, so many technology companies, AI, big data, you know, uh, blockchain. And, and, and one example is we partner with a uh, blockchain company um, um, and we are able to provide supply chain services. Probably, I, 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 I hope you understand a bit of a supply chain, but in the old days, it is uh, relatively easy if you only do one level of supply chain. That is, you have a big buyer and then you finance the first layer supplier, right? But with the blockchain technology, we are able to finance all the way down to, I think the latest one is like 11 level um, um, uh, suppliers, which you can imagine actually is not a very big company, quite far away from, uh, from, the, from the anchor company. Um, you will not be able to do this in the old days uh, without technology. So, and, and I think we, this, is, this is the beauty of GBA. Uh, we have all this technology there that um, everyone, every company can, can leverage uh, to support it. And I think um, uh, we're talking about GBA to circulation development that you can break it down into a, you know, different parts, right? One is the domestic uh, business, which you, you have an 80 million population. The GDP is growing very nicely, strongly um, every year. Um, I, I think for that piece, your organic growth, you definitely will need a bank um, that can provide you all kinds of services. I think, um, you know, uh, from, from, from supply chain, from your capital expansion, uh, even to the founder, okay? Uh, I think all these tech companies, you know how many billionaires um, uh, reproduce every day. <laughs> Whenever a company go IPO in Hong Kong, uh, all of a sudden you have, uh, you know, a bunch of billionaires being created and, 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 and they need bank service. Uh, to provide them uh, all the wealth management advice. And Hong Kong plays to serve all these clients, right? You, you have uh, all the asset managers here, you have all kind of funds here. Um, um, and, and more importantly is, uh, now this is wealth management. On the other side, for a company, a tech company, um, that they're growing very fast, they will need a lot of capital support to start with before the bank come in. And Hong Kong also has a very, very comprehensive ecosystem, right? From VCPE, you know, all the investors there to support all this, all this company. So, so Hong Kong is really um, very exciting. I mean, if, if you have a company, uh, we should start to slowly shift away from, oh, I'm a Hong Kong company or I'm a GBA company. Probably you should start to think about, okay, what can you, how can you, um, split the work of your company, certain part put in Hong Kong, certain part put in, in, in the GBA cities, uh, depends on what you want. And, and, and you're talking about five seconds, I mean, Alex talked about five seconds per trap, right? Before pandemic, a few data points, every day you have over 600,000 people crossing the land border every day. If you get on a high-speed train, um, you know, uh, from West Kowloon, we all know, it takes you 20 minutes um, uh, to get to Futian in Shenzhen. It takes you an hour to go to Guangzhou. And if you are familiar with Hong Kong, probably the same time uh, of taking MTR from Chinwan to Taiwan, um, you, you are in Guangzhou already. Uh, so so I, I think this GBA construct, um, the more higher mobility of people, capital um, and resources, allow us to really think about how should we construct our company to fully leverage the opportunity um, uh, presented um, by GBA. So, and Hong Kong from a financial services perspective, that what I said from the very first uh, um, capital, seed capital, all the way down to your IPO and also continue banking support in terms of all kinds of uh, trade products, lending products to support a company growth is key. And also one thing I want to highlight, risk management. Very often when you come to banking services, people think about, oh, lending, boring. Right? In fact, 
um, uh, this is not always the case. I think bank plays a very crucial role in supporting companies to manage all kinds of risks. Their liquidity risk, their FX risk. Um, uh, when you're in China, Hong Kong, you deal with international market, you will be handling multiple currency. Uh, how to manage this risk properly? Hong Kong really um, can provide the, 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 the widest spectrum of uh, services and advices um, um, to companies in GBA. Thank, Thank you, you Anthony. Kathy. Thank you. So, um, yeah, you remind me that it, it can be proved. There's, a, there's an evidence that, you know, the market players in the financial services, <laughs> they are all fighting for the talents right now. You know, I, I just read an email from my company. We can have a bonus for just, you know, grabbing the talents from, you know, other areas to our firm, and then we can get a, a joining bonus. <laughs> so uh, it can, you know, that actually, actually this is that evidence showing that there are lots of opportunities right now in, in Hong Kong, um, particularly not just tech, com you know, tech uh, industry, not just the biomed, but also in the financial services center, you know, um, services uh, sector. Thank you, Anthony. So, um, Alex, um, uh, difficult questions to you. Uh, because of the, uh, you know, the persistence of the pandemic and uh, the new virus called Omi Omicron. <laughs> anyway, um, so what will be the challenges and the business opportunities ahead? Um, would there be any, you know, um, another, you know, blocking the the the, the bounds, you know, the, the borders again or whatever? Yeah, just feel free to to share with us. Thank you, Kevin. We, uh, we, we also have the bonus yeah, that, uh, to attend any challenge into our uh, industry. Yeah, so many companies that uh, they call the uh, referral fee. Yeah, they can give the college uh, inside the company that they give you the referral fee, maybe uh, uh, half, half month of the income that if you refer someone that they can stay for uh, uh, after probation. Yeah, so I think that we all fight for the different talents in, in, in we different don't, industry. We don't need to, um, you know, have the uh, provision. Uh, uh, once you can introduce someone, you can get the bonus. Okay, so uh, very good question. Okay, so uh, uh, what? Let me let me think how to reply on this one. So I think maybe recently, okay, we, we are talking about recently. They recently because of the COVID that. Uh, we are one of the freight forwarder company in Hong Kong that we have been uh, invest and also do some research and development in the in how to transport the uh, pharmaceutical products from one place to another. Uh, we have studied it about six or eight years before, so uh, be, not before of the co not because of the COVID, but we already do in some transportation for this one. So uh, in during the COVID. Uh, very beginning that we carry the very general cargo, but very important one is the bus. Okay, and then later on, because of the Chinese uh, company, they need to back to work, so they the factory they will buy the some of the protection coat or protection mask or the high standard uh, prevention any uh, prevention uh, standard. Okay, the uh, requirement for uh, some of the China gov uh, some of the different provinces government. So they because they need to return work. Okay, they need to we work to normal. So they need to have the state standard. So they buy quite a lot of different things from other countries. Okay, so we 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 uh, get the benefit from this. Okay, even up to now we get the benefit for the test kits for the uh, COVID because the COVID. The virus, uh, they have the alpha, beta, different uh, delta, and now it's the Omicron. Okay, they, sometimes we call the oh my god. Okay, so this is this is all the product that they, they need to catch up the the test uh, methods. Okay, because uh, I think certain months before that we understand the Persian case, the in Persil, because of the because the COVID test methods or the tool is not advanced, so they cannot detect the. COVID virus at that moment. I, I don't remember the name of the that, that, that virus in the name, okay? But uh, because of this, uh, they cannot catch on harm, so they cannot detect anyone. So this will make very bad for the whole situation. Okay, so, so now we carry on, we can do this kind of the business. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't 
I don't too worry about the, the business of the, the, the coaching pharmaceutical, but I do worry about the, um, during the COVID, the, there is quite a uh, heavy burden for, mo for the common or the general product, the uh, suppliers or the customer, okay? Uh, so we can see some thing maybe uh, from our freight, the higher price of freight contribute to the invasion of the United States. Okay, because quite very, very expensive uh, ocean and air freight now. Okay, when compared with the normal situation that may be five times or the 10 times of uh, when, when we compare with the, the, the normal situation. Okay, this is now one of the very challenging for the customer. So some customer have gone, okay, because they are produced, the product is not so expensive. So they are gone. No, no business. They cannot survive. Okay, and the other side is that we do we do some business for our customer now. Uh, before is in the normal situation that we only carry whether we you are able you are able to pay the freight for us, but now we need to know more whether they are need they can be survived. For example, we have uh, one customer in uh, Shenzhen that they provide the uh, candies, they provide the candies to supermarket in US. But as we mentioned that the US, the ocean freight is quite higher, okay? The ocean freight, the door-to-door -door prices is already cover 17, seven, se seven zero, 17 percent of their cargo value. So this will make very sufficient for us whether we can provide the service for them or not. Because what we understand that with there is the, the delay of the shipping schedule, this is uh, law, very normal nowadays, okay, that their product maybe get uh, out of stock and also maybe their product is get, because they also have their expiry date. Okay, so if they cannot catch in time, then they will forget the cargo, okay? They will just hold it in the, maybe the harbor or the container station over there. So this is, uh, one of the challenges for us uh, during the COVID, because nowadays we long, not only to take about take about the customer whether they are able to pay the fake, but we also need to know what kind of the business they are doing and what is they are doing now. Okay, so this is uh, what we are we are talking about the challenge of uh, the, our industry now. Mr. Shi, you mentioned the trends of artificial intelligence. So for your company, or as for ourselves, uh, how do we improve ourselves? Um, perhaps in the future, we don't have to be moderators and speakers because AI can replace us. How do you look at AI? How can we prepare ourselves for the new era? Thank you. It's a very interesting question. Personally, I think people expect too much from AI. Please, don't worry. Rest assured, AI will not replace human beings. But AI can replace some repetitive routine work done by humans. Let me give you two case studies. First, we have this product called Metro Brain, and one of the business processes is smart customer service. For example, if I am someone who doesn't speak Chinese and I come to Hong Kong and I have no idea how I can go from Kowloon to Chunwan. So in any language, you can talk with a robot in, in Mandarin, Cantonese, or English, and this robot will be able to help you buy a metro ticket. And they can offer the routes and other information uh, as a push notification to your mobile phone, so you will know where to exit the metro station. And this is realized in Guangzhou already. You would agree that it's, it's impossible for the human service providers to do that, but in 
Guangzhou Metro. These staff members, they can do a lot of other work, uh, other types of work which may require more human work, for example, uh, working in a control center, monitoring the operation of trains, but simply asking for uh, directions, you can give that to AI. The second example is with Shanghai. In Shanghai, we are building this project of super city. Uh, we offer them this transportation brain products. And in this system, we inject four, uh, 1,400,000 uh, data points, including traffic lights, uh, policemen, and uh, the positions of vehicles in operation. And what we do with this data, it's for improvement of routes. For example, in Shanghai, if you need to go from the downtown to the airport, Traditionally, if you use this navigation software, they would tell you from A to B, that's the easiest route. But with AI, uh, with our products, you will be able to know what is the best route considering all factors. But for that, we need to rely on a complex algorithm and uh, computing power. But within one month, uh, with our technology, we have uh, increased the speed of uh, operation of vehicles by 15 percent within one month. And this is impossible. This was impossible before for such a big transportation system. But now with AI, we can do that. You asked whether AI will be able to replace human beings. I would say it's impossible because we're doing total different things with AI, we will have probably more job opportunities instead of less. For example, uh, in metro stations, in city, in urban management, with AI, we have a lot of other things to do because there will be new job positions for human beings. I'm sure it's going to be a very harmonious coexisting process. Take our company, for example, we have 3,000 employees and we have over 50,000 uh, engineers, con given that we have a large engineers uh, working for our business partners. It was hard to imagine that there would be such a great number of people working for AI. I'm sure AI would not replace human beings. They will only make our life easier and better. Thank you. So I will be working hard. Thank you. So um, given the time constraint, I I don't know whether Anthony, uh, Alex, or uh, Sujong, do you have any add-on? Um, you know, along that uh, what we just discussed. It? So um, if no, uh, so um, hi, Kevin. If, if I may. Yep. Anthony. Do you have any oh, no, I, I, yeah. Um, no, I just, I just want to. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, GBA definitely presents um, a very big opportunities for um, uh, you know both companies want to come to GBA or even GBA companies want to go overseas, um, and that's why I think with you know, colleagues, um, uh, friends in today's webinar. Um, uh, there are lots of things we can work together. Um, you know, uh, uh, I think today, hopefully, um, they can help to bring some of the GBA information to the companies um, in their markets. But at the same time, I think it would be very um, uh, helpful, right? Uh, if the GBA companies receive more also information about the opportunity in other markets. And um, I think this in and out, you know, the dual circulation thing, Hong Kong plays a very crucial role to connect um, these opportunities. And I think with Asia um, being a growth engine um, in the future, I think the supply chain, uh, I, I'm sure Alex will agree. I mean, the flow of uh, good, flows of good, whatever within intra-Asia will continue 
to grow. So um, I think Standard Charter can can be um, a very good partner to a lot of you because like we, we have strong presence in all the ASEAN markets. Uh, our footprint is like 75% overlap with the Bell and Road kind of um, um, uh, initiative roadmap. Um, so uh, we are very keen to um, uh, explore um, this, you know, exploit the Hong Kong of, uh, of position as a super super connector. Um, so very happy um, to work with every one of you in the future. Thank you, thank you, Anthony. So um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you the time uh, from Anthony, uh, Alex, and Mr. Xu today. And um, I believe that we all agree that um, their views and also the comments and sharings are very insightful and very useful for the audience when they trying to um, basically to uh, to have their business plan, you know, arranged it, and also to see whether it is uh, good to have their presence in GBA area. So um, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the, the panel speakers, to also again congratulate uh, Mr. Paulus for the uh, for the elected as the chairman of, of this term. So um, yeah, this I pass on to you. Thank you very much for our chair and panel speakers. Let's give a big applause to them for the inspiring discussion. Our next section is the Young Executive Program, which will feature a few successful Hong Kong young entrepreneurs. 